In today's video, we are going to unbox and take a close look at this guy. This is my new Akko 5108 that got sent out to me by Akko to review and compare with the Akko 3068 that I was using prior to this keyboard. I think this is great because it has a numerical keypad and it also has the Nordic layout which I need to be able to come up to my typing speeds that I want for work. The Akko 5108 comes in at a price of between 115 and 130 US dollars. And if you want to buy one of these guys, I will be placing a link of where to find it down in the description below. All right, it is time to get into the package that I got from Akko with supposedly my new keyboard that I'm gonna be testing out and some new switches that I'm going to be testing out as well. First we have this fairly big box and we get everything out of there. These are the haze pink switches which are mechanical but almost silent switches that I'm going to be trying out to one of my Akko keyboard coming up. Then I have a switch tester. So with this good guy, you can test the clickiness of all the different switches from Echo. And here we have the main star of the show, which is the Echo 5108. This is their black and gold keyboard, which is full size and comes with a numerical keyboard, as you can see there on the right. Echo keyboards always come wrapped up in a sleeve. So we pull the sleeve off like that. And then we have the main box for the keyboard. Two openings up in the front, and we have a little foam sheet that is covering the keyboard. A plastic piece that is covering up the main package here. And then we have a box here with the cable and accessories. Uh, let's have a look at the accessories first. Here we have the little tool to get the switches out. The tool to get the keycaps off. The USB-A to USB-C cable that you can use to charge the keyboard or if you want to use it in cabled mode. We have some nice yellow color keycaps that we can use, I guess, to switch out the looks of the keyboard. I'm not 100% sure how it looks when you take it out of the box, but these are usually the ones you can use to alter the appearance. Last but not least, this is new actually. Here is a little USB receiver that I assume you can use if you don't want to use Bluetooth with the keyboard. So probably this is a another form of wireless transfer uh, with radio I guess then radio transmission under the keyboard we also have a user manual which uh, is important in some ways because this states how you can set up the keyboard with the different wireless modes which I didn't find to be completely clear when I was using my echo keyboard before now let's take a look at the main keyboard here and then we take out the keyboard. And as you can see there, it has got only the dark keycaps on. So we are with gray and black keycaps with yellow color signs on them. To me, this is a really beautiful and sleek looking keyboard. And the fact that it has the numerical keyboard will make it quite a lot easier for me when I'm doing office work. Comparing this to my previous Echo keyboard, you can see that the size difference is pretty significant. Here you have a very compact layout and here we have a full size layout. And this is the way it looks put in place in my work setup. You have it here with my MacBook Pro, my Inosem 4K monitor and my Logitech MX Master 3. I think it goes really well together with this setup, but I'm going to give it some time and then come back with the full on review content. I have now spent a solid month using the keyboard and there are a few things that I want to cover that I think are very interesting when you start using this keyboard. First of all, you need to make good use of the instruction manual because there are a bunch of shortcuts that you can use together with the function key 
and I find it really hard to keep those in my head. The most important one is that you switch Bluetooth profile between E, R and T. So you press function and E, R, T will be your three different devices. My previous Echo keyboard, the smaller one, had the hot switches for Windows mode versus Apple mode. But that feature has now moved into the back here and you can switch between USB, Windows and Mac right here. The other thing I want to point out right away that I realized quickly is that the USB port is not 100% compatible with all cables. As you can see there, it's sunk in quite a bit and it's got those uh, holes or, or edges uh, on the sides and they are compatible with this USB cable. And as you can see, it's got those little edges here on the sides that make them fit in the USB port on the keyboard. So this is a sort of proprietary cable and you can probably find non-proprietary ones that would fit with the keyboard, but it is something that is changed a bit compared to my other Echo keyboard. This is the way I was used to it working with a USB-C port that you could just use with any kind of USB-C cable. And then I would basically just, when I needed to charge, I would take the USB-C cable for my laptop and plug it right into the keyboard. With setup and USB cable out of the way, I think we can have a closer look at what I think about using the keyboard. And I have to say that the experience in total has been absolutely great. I think that having a full-size mechanical keyboard that looks as good and as clean as this guy with the numerical keyboard that I have missed quite a bit from my mini Echo keyboard that I have been using before is really a blast. I have been very happy with the overall functionality of the keyboard and I think the look is really nice and really sleek but they did include these kind of accentuated yellow keys and I think we're gonna do a little experiment to switch out some of the keys and see what look we can achieve with this keyboard and these keys. The keyboard comes together with one of these guys to be able to remove the keycaps. So it is a very smooth process to remove them. And let's see which ones we actually want to use here. Um, I think there are some pretty natural ones that we can switch out. The backspace key, uh, the arrow keys can be switched. The space key can be switched. The enter key down here you also have some funky keycaps like this that I guess you can switch out for whatever you want to achieve a more personal look. Maybe I should use these on like the escape key because it's quite obvious what the escape key is. And there is a yellow escape key here. It's more fun to have one of those guys maybe. Let's start off with that guy. Here you can also see that the keyboard comes with the purple switches and I got the haze pink switches sent out as a bonus from Echo and the haze pink switches are completely silent ones. So I figured that one thing we'll do as well now is try switching out one of these switches and compare the sound of the haze pink switches to the sound of the purple switches because the purple switches are somewhat loud and it's going to be quite interesting to hear the difference. The keyboard also comes with this uh, tool that you use to remove switches just like that and then you would just grab any of the switches from the new pack and install it into the right position like that. And then you take whatever keycap it is that you feel fits in the escape position. And there you have the new look. And here you can hear the difference. Okay. 
it's a huge difference in how loud these switches are. So I think that means I'm going to go for changing to the silent switches because my colleagues, my employees, will be a lot happier if I don't make as much noise as I'm currently doing. One of the most important things when buying a mechanical keyboard is of course the feeling and the sound of the switches. And I think the feeling of these purple switches that come with this Echo keyboard are absolutely great. Uh, I have had one of my best typing experiences with it. It has that perfect balance between loudness, clickiness, uh, a bit of accentuation force needed but not too much. This is the sound of the Echo 5108. For comparison purposes, this is the audio from the pink switches, which are installed in my Echo 3068 keyboard that I made a separate review of a few months ago. As you can hear, they are quite silent compared to the 5108 switches, the purple ones that I have installed there. And to make a proper comparison with how silent a keyboard can be if you go in the totally other direction in the keyboard market. This is the typing audio from a Mac Magic keyboard. I don't like the typing experience of this. I think there's way too little travel, but uh, some of my employees really enjoy it. And it's uh, to each their own, I think, with keyboard experiences. The main question for me when I got asked to try out the Echo 5108 was how I would like the larger size when this finally was available with the Nordic layout that I need to be able to type in Swedish. I have been missing out on having a numerical keyboard in my Echo 3068, but I didn't know how that would work, for example, with the experience of using a mouse that I'm used to sometimes having quite close to my smaller size keyboard like this. Ergonomically, I believe it has not been a problem, at least not so far. And to be fair, the numerical keypad is something that I use a lot. And I truly enjoy having this available when I use Excel sheets and type a lot of numbers, which is something I do when running my business. So in the choice of the Echo 3068 versus the 5108, for my office purposes, I will be going with the 5108. Regardless of the USB-C port issues, I will be having the cable available here in the office, so I will be able to charge whenever it needs to. I do recommend turning down the brightness because that saves a ton of battery life. I've done that both with this guy and I've done it with this guy. And it's one thing that I have complained a little bit about with both these Echo keyboards that the battery is not as great as some other wireless keyboard alternatives. As mentioned before, I have spent about two months using this keyboard now, and before that I was using the Echo 3068, so I'm starting to get some experience with these keyboards from Echo. And I really like the experience. I think both the switches that Echo make and the looks of the keyboard are really, really nice, and they fit so well on this kind of somewhat clean desk setup that I am striving to have. I do also have the plan to try this keyboard with the haze pink switches and therefore make it almost completely silent, but that will be in a separate video from this one. The pros of the keyboard is definitely the overall typing experience. Having a Nordic wireless keyboard that works perfectly, both with Windows and Mac, but also can be plugged with a cable 
or with a USB receiver to use for wireless 2.4 gigahertz. This is a very versatile kind of keyboard experience that is not super common. Sometimes you have just one of those solutions available and here you can even use three Bluetooth units and switch between these guys. So you could use it for example for several computers or you could use it for your computer, iPad and mobile phone or whatever other units you want to set it up with. That is a very smooth thing to be able to use. I also really enjoy the looks of this keyboard. When I set it up and unpacked it, I had the black and gray keys and now I switched them out for a few of the yellow accentuated ones. And I really enjoy the way that this looks on my desk. The cons of the keyboard, I think, are the function and combination keys, how you make the different settings. I basically always have to go back to the user manual to be able to change some setting. And it's very hard to remember those settings and keep them in my head all of the time. The second and most obvious con of the keyboard is that the USB port is sunk in quite a bit and therefore more or less requires the proprietary cable that comes in the box with it. If you have any questions about the ACO 5108 you can ask them down in the comment section below. I'm usually quite quick to reply to comments. If you want to buy the keyboard you can find links of where to find it down in the description below and I hope you have a really nice day and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye!